Hey friends, it's Cami. Today we're talking 18 month HRT. Yes, it's been a year and a half already. I feel like it was just six months ago when I was talking about it being a year. How time flies. Uh, also, real quick, I apologize if the lighting is bad. I lost the power cord to my uh, ring light, and so I have to use a window like some kind of peasant. Anyway, I'll stop burying the lead. What is this, a screen queen video? Okay, so when we do an HRT update, we talk about physical changes, emotional changes, and societal changes. Uh, I'm changing my name, getting ahead of myself. Also, I'm really glad to be back at this. Thanks for your patience while I was away. I think I'm gonna get rid of that intro. I don't feel like we really need it anymore. If you like it, let me know. I'll probably ask your opinion on a few things as we go along. We'll talk about why later. Medications. Every day I take 100 milligrams of spironolactone twice, two milligrams of sublingual estradiol twice, and 100 milligrams of progesterone just once. Until last month, I was using the estradiol patches, but they were kind of a pain in the ass, so I switched to just pills. Originally, I started on just Spiro, and I did that for two months before I was ready for full HRT with increased Spiro and estradiol patches. That was the 18 months ago that we're talking about. Six months later, so a year ago, we added progesterone. Okay, a first, physical changes. Six months ago, when we talked about this, I said that it seemed like most of my physical changes were past me. And I got feedback from some folks with different experiences. I say like they, uh, they had just as much breast growth in year two as they did in year one and so on. Since then, I have to say that not much has changed, leading me to believe that the bulk of my physical changes really are behind me. I'm jealous to all the girls who have different experiences. Give me them titties! Let's take a look at the HRT changes chart. The categories are fat redistribution, reduced muscle, softer skin, lower libido, reduced erections, breast growth, testicle shrinking, and body hair thinning. Right now, we are here. As the chart shows, we're in the end phases of reduced muscle, softer skin, and lower libido, and nearing the end of fat redistribution, breast growth, and testicle shrinking, and it really only started getting rolling on the body hair thinging, which really can't happen fast enough, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Fat redistribution has definitely been happening, but it's all subtle at this point. My lower body has gotten some nice changes with thicker thighs and curvier hips and a rounder butt. I love all of that. Up top, nothing has changed. I'm still rocking an absolutely voluptuous 38 double A and I have been since probably around month eight or nine. I'd like to at least hit an A cup. A cup titties are amazing and I love them and I wouldn't mind having a pair of my own. I don't hate my double A's, but still, it looks like this is what I've got outside of surgery, which I'm probably not gonna bother to have. Testicle shrinking is another one that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. It happened around six or nine month mark and then kind of tapered off. Now it's more comfortable to tuck, but that's about it. Body hair though, ugh, body hair. This has always been my biggest dysphoria trigger and what I always thought would be my biggest hurdle. I was not wrong. Like seriously, I've been thinking about that for decades and I really don't know how I didn't know that I was trans for so long. Anyway, it's supposed to thin and fall out starting around the one year mark and I've yet to notice much of anything. Hopefully that changes soon. Speaking of hair, I'm looking to get laser from my face. I'm not there yet, but it's on the horizon. I'll tell you all about it when uh, I start taking those steps. Emotional changes. I had a panic attack at the doctor. I chime in with the heaven few people ever heard of. Closing a goddamn door, no. No, no, at the doctor. So it turns out I can't have male caregivers. So welcome to womanhood, apparently. To be clear, he was great. It was all me. My PCP had him do a little test where I stood around and he took my blood pressure a few times. It wasn't invasive or anything like that, but I was 100% not okay with him doing it. I didn't realize how not okay I was with it until after he was done. 
Um, when I told my PCP I didn't like male caregivers, she apologized profusely and said that she would make sure to always check with me first. Uh, so some rando dude doesn't just walk in and do a thing. This was before my panic attack uh, spiraled into full meltdown, but still. I will be telling her about it when I see her next that I can't have men doing stuff at all if it can be avoided. I've never been a fan of doctor's appointments and I don't know why, especially now since my PCP is amazing, but with this guy I was laying there and just being really uncomfortable and thinking like, is he going to say something about being trans? How is he going to react to me? Is his reaction going to be profoundly negative? I think, I think the fact that I didn't know is what did it. Especially now that I've gotten sicker and hormones have taken my muscle mass, I'm just not as healthy and thus more vulnerable, I guess. Less confident being able to defend myself, maybe? I don't know. The big lesson here is this is how almost every woman feels around men we don't know. When I was a guy, I knew that for women who didn't know me, I made them uncomfortable because they had no way of knowing I wasn't one of those guys. And a lot of guys don't understand that. Like, sure, you might be one of the good ones, but we have no way of knowing that at first. So, you know, give us some space. That segues nicely into another thing. I always knew that a kind of silent sisterhood exists among women. I had taste of it when I was working as a CNA. I talked about before how I was just one of the girls at work, but now I feel I'm, like I'm part of it all the time. So I was at the grocery store and this skeezy old guy started creeping closer and closer to me, giving me that side eye thing that they do. I've had enough of the old guy leaning over and saying something and then walking away like that's okay. Because, spoiler alert, it's fucking not. So anyway, I turn and walk on out of the aisle, and in doing so, I almost plow right into this woman. I said sorry, and then I quietly added, there was a creepy guy down there. Uh, she just gave me a knowing nod like, yes, yeah, sis, we've all been there. It's cool. Despite all of this, I've gotten more comfortable and closer with my male friends. Probably because they're some of the good ones. Mood overall, though, has been kind of up and down. I've just been feeling really disingenuine. Uh, this happens to me sometimes when I realize I've kind of drifted away from the things that I enjoy doing and my life has become kind of bland and unfulfilling. It's important that we know our passions and then follow them. We exist to experience the world and to follow our joy. Existence isn't the end goal. So I settled into trying to make an online, an online life work for me. That was kind of hard to say. Completely missing the point. Uh, I haven't been passionate about the vast majority of what I've created lately. This has been most apparent in my content here. I mean, it's no shock to say that I went dark for a little while there. The reason for this is I made a few episodes. Uh, patrons got to see the scripts and show notes, but the videos never got edited and uploaded. One of them went up. Check it out there if you're interested. If you saw it, you'll know what I mean. Uh, it's not a bad video, it's informational and so on, but it's not me. There's no passion in it, and that's just not what I do. There are a lot of trans and trans educational YouTubers out there. I don't need to try and get into that field. Unless that field happens to be nothing but a field of Mia Mulder's collarbones, which admittedly sounds really creepy to say, but have you seen those things? Anyway, I almost shut down this channel a few times because well, what the hell do I have left to say? A few increasingly uninteresting HRT videos and maybe a series about laser hair removal or changing my name. We're getting there. Anyway, at this point, I've decided to try to expand the scope of the channel. There's already an audience here invested in what I am and what I do. And thank you for every bit of encouragement that you give me. I'm an author, and I haven't written shit in forever. For a while there, I was really prolific, writing and publishing and even branching out and doing events and so on, and I loved that. All my effort lately has been trying to get YouTube to work for me, and it's just, it's not gonna happen. I need to be me and do what I'm passionate about. I'm not prolific enough a content creator to make the almighty algorithm happy. So I want to diversify the content here. I want to talk about my writing, discuss story ideas, and 
current projects, turn it into a bit of a community experience. But what do you think about that? Is that the kind of thing you'd be into? Let me know. I also thought about shutting down the other channel and bringing that content over here, but I'm really not sure about that. I feel like those videos are really different, though maybe they aren't. I do the same kind of talking head things sitting in the same chair, though not today because of lighting issues. Those just have a touch more production value to them. I don't know. If you've seen them or if you want to check them out, let me know what you think. I feel like if everything were in one place, I'd be more productive, or at least I'd feel more productive without long stretches of nothing on one channel. Minus having a crew to handle different aspects of video production, having a bunch of channels just doesn't seem the best fit for me. I'm not Simon Whistler. Allegedly. Anyway, let's talk about the exciting societal changes stuff. I'm changing my name. <clears throat> for real, I'm super excited. Uh, I'll do a whole dedicated video or two about what all is involved, but yeah, I'm finally starting the process. I got my driver's permit, um, the script says last week, but I delayed making the videos, so it was actually like three weeks ago, uh, and I changed my gender marker. I'm so excited, though, I don't really like that it still says Joshua, so I'll keep you all posted on that. <laughs> Those of you who know me, are probably like, uh, Cammie, you've been driving a long time. And yeah, I have been. The difference is now I'm doing it legally. Next topic. I'm still trying to find my style. I've been presenting as female since pretty much the beginning video about it, but I've been trying to figure out my personal style, which is a lot harder than it seems. So I got a masterclass by Tan France and he showed how to do exactly this. He also showed how to do it in a way that makes you feel really good in your own clothes and your own body. So here's the steps. First, find a style icon. Someone that you look at regularly and think they look well put together and comfortable and such. I chose Marisha Ray because obviously. If you don't know her, she's an actress, streamer, and professional nerd. In looking up pictures of her, I found a Tumblr called Marisha Ray Made Me Gay. So. I also said Brie Larson because every time I see a picture of her, I'm like, she looks great. I may have chosen both of these ladies because I'm a huge lesbian and, you know. Next step is make a Pinterest board and look at a bunch of pictures of fashion and just save everything that makes you think the girl wearing it looks really comfortable and stylish and well put together. So I did, and it turns out my style is basic white girl. The girlfriend and I both did this and then kind of edited our wardrobe Marie Kondo style and got rid of a metric ass ton of clothes. It's all going to a local thrift store run by Main Transnet. I'll put a link in the description if you're curious about what that's all about, provided they have a landing page for it. Uh, they tell me it should be open for business around January, so we'll see when that goes live. With every day that goes by, I feel more and more like myself. I've said a bunch of times that the changes are incremental and kind of hard to see, but by doing these updates every six months instead of every month, now I really get to see and appreciate the changes. I've got another channel, for the time being at least, where I talk about movies called Screen Queen. As of right now, my most recent video is about Dune 1984, and the next one is about Rotor from 1987, and after that there'll be one about the Shaft franchise. You can find me on Instagram at Carmilla TLV, TLV like tragic lesbian vampire. I try to do modeling on there, but sometimes I'm just not up to doing a photo shoot, so I have droughts. If you want to buy me coffee, just like in the last video, you can also find me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Carmilla TLV. I got another patron and it's wild to see a bunch of names now, so thank you so much to each and every one of you. If subscriptions aren't your thing, you can also throw some money in my tip jar paypal.me slash Carmilla TLV. PayPal still dead names me, but that's just for banking purposes, so don't worry about it. Whether financially or emotionally, I appreciate all the support I've gotten. Thanks so much for being my friend. I'll see you next time.